This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and the question talks about a 31 year old female who delivered a 1 kg baby at 31 weeks of gestation. The child also has hepatosplenomegaly and jaundice. On a CT scan, periventricular calcification is seen. What is the most likely diagnosis? And your options are toxoplasmosis, herpes simplex, cytomegalovirus and parvo P19. Now this is a super important topic and uh, you know a lot of questions keep coming on intrauterine infections and their manifestation. So in this short video I will talk about the most important intrauterine infections and what are their manifestations at the time of birth. And also I will show you a lot of clinical images which have been asked, x-rays, CTA scans, you know skin images which have been asked towards the end of the lecture. So view this lecture completely because this is a super important topic. Let's start by you know enumerating what are the most common intrauterine infections so we already know the answer for this it is the torch group of infections okay so t stands for toxoplasmosis o is others we will just enumerate others r is for rubella c is for cyto megalovirus and H is for herpes simplex virus. What are the other infections? The most common being syphilis, varicella joster, human parvovirus B19, HIV and Zika. So these are the most common congenital you know intrauterine infections now we will look at each one of them and just look at the most salient features which will help you to identify that particular congenital infection in a clinical snippet they will give you so let's start with toxoplasmosis so so we know toxoplasmosis is primarily swept by consumption of, of under cooked infected food or exposure to feces of the infected cat okay and from mother it goes to the child during intrauterine okay so this is how it is affected now there is a very very important triad which you have to remember for congenital toxoplasmosis so let's talk about the triad so this triad, the first feature is chorioretinitis. So this children will have chorioretinitis. The second is hydrocephalus and the last being intracranial calcifications. Okay. So intracranial calcification. So this is a very very important right. Other features which can be seen. Other features which can be seen is you know low birth weight. Skin rashes. So low birth weight rate uh, is almost common to most of these congenital infections and jaundice. So these are the most common manifestations of congenital toxoplasmosis. We will see. Uh, the images of chorioretinitis, we will see the images of intracranial calcifications in a while, but these are the important features. Next look at another very important intrauterine infection that is rubella, also called as German measles. So here again a very important triad is there. So let's look at the triad. So the first important feature of this triad is cataract congenital cataract very important you have to remember the second important is cardiac defects when I talk about cardiac defects patent ductus arteriosus or pulmonary artery stenosis these are the common cardiac defects and the last is sensi neural deafness so these are the three classical triad of a patient who has rubella, congenital rubella. 
अदर मैनिफेस्टेशंस कैन बी लो बर्थ वेट के पैटो स्प्लिनो मेगेली एंड टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई विल वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर इज ब्लूबेरी स्किन ब्लूबेरी मफिन स्किन रैशेस सो दिस रैशेस आई विल शो यू द इमेज क्लिनिकल इमेज इन अ वाइल सो ब्लूबेरी स्किन मफिन स्किन रैसेस एंड थ्रोम्बो साइटोपिनिक परफ्यूरा सो अगेन दीज टू आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स ऑफ योर कॉन्जेनाइटल रुबेला नाउ लेट्स लुक एट अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्जेनाइटल इन्फेक्शन दैट इज साइटोमेगैलो वायरस सो मोस्ट बेबीज हु हैव कॉन्जेनाइटल साइटोमेगैलो वायरस विल बी एसिम्टोमेटिक ओनली वेन द इन्फेक्शन इज अर्ली इन द प्रेगनेंसी देन यू आर गोइंग टू हैव सिम्टम्स सो वॉट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट सिम्टम्स सो फर्स्ट ऑब्वियसली बी लो बर्थ वेट अदर इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स विल बी माइक्रो सिफेलि सीजर्स एंड इंट्रा क्रेनियल स्पेसिफिकली पेरी वेंट्री कुलर कैल्सिफिकेशन ओके सो दिस इज वन देन यू विल हैव हिपैटोस्प्लिनो मेगेली विथ जॉन्डिस Another very very important is sensorineural deafness. In fact, congenital cytomegalovirus is one of the most common cause of sensorineural congenital sensorineural deafness. That is non-genetic. So, if you remove all the genetic causes, the most common non-genetic cause of sensorineural uh, deafness is your congenital cytomegalovirus. You can also have vision you know uh, vision difficulties or later in life they can have learning disabilities okay congenital cytomegalovirus let's talk about herpes simplex virus infection so now hsv generally if the mother has an active herpes simplex uh, you know infection uh, then only during the uh, pregnancy then only the child will suffer okay and it will be primarily presenting as skin lesions or lesions of eye or mouth lesions also remember there will be in cephalitis in this but remember there will be no intra cranial calcification okay in in cephalitis will be there but there will be no intra cranial calcification the next so once we have run this let's look at the other groups so next we have got is syphilis okay in syphilis we have early manifestations and we have late manifestations so when we talk about early manifestations it can be hepatosplenomegaly rash and certain skeletal deformities but it is the late manifestation which is more you know asked and more pre you know kind of characteristic of syphilis so late manifestation again we all know hutchinson's teeth mulberry molars then you can have saddle nose then you can have saber sin so all these are you know very very characteristic lesions i will show images of all of these so that you are able to identify in the examination and this will get stuck in your mind next we can have is varicella zoster infection okay so in this also you will have low birth weight limb hypoplasia is very 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 characteristic another very characteristic uh, you know finding which you will have in varicella zoster infection is your skin scarring okay skin scarring and it will happen only if the mother had uh, you know varicella zoster infection during pregnancy during pregnancy if the mother had it then the child may have the yeah the next is hiv now hiv does not have any uh, such manifestation the only manifestation you are going to have is failure to thrive then you can have recurrent infection and developmental delays 
okay and primarily during uh, you know uh, delivery or during breastfeeding all those cases there can be a transmission of HIV. Let's talk about another very important group that is human parvovirus B19. Now it, it generally caused recurrent absorption uh, abortions or miscarriages or it can you know also present as non-immune hydrops fetalis non-immune hydrops fetalis if the child is born they will be severe anemia okay because this will affect uh, bone marrow again no uh, periventricular cal uh, calcification and all that is seen so these are the most important findings of the most common uh, con uh, congenital infection yes one thing i left was zika virus when i talk about zika virus again some very very characteristic finding will be microcephaly then you will have lot of neurological defects in these patients ocular defects and hearing defects okay so the most important being microcephaly in zika virus so all these are important intrauterine infections now once we have learned about the important theory point let me show you a few clinical images so what you can see in this cl clinical image so you can see a yellowish necrotic tissue on retinal focus ill-defined margins are there okay even you can have some whitish you know uh, uh, whitish patches as well as retinal hyperpigmentation so this is what is chorioretinitis again seen in congenital toxoplasmosis so very important clinical images very difficult to miss if you are given a clinical image of this let's look at this image so you can see throughout the brain there are calcification okay this is again you know periventricular calcification periventricular calcification so it is seen in congenital toxoplasmosis and cytomegalovirus periventricular primarily in cytomegalovirus and in toxoplasmosis throughout the uh, brain you will have these calcifications let's look at this infection so this you can see congenital cataract and very very characteristic rashes which you can see this is your blueberry muffin rash very easy to identify once a clinical image is given what is this this is Hutchington treat what is this this is mulberry molars this is a normal molar okay well-defined cusps but here you will have these you know like a mulberry so mulberry molars so what is this so you can have this saddle nose because of the destruction of the cartilage there saddle nose deformity so what are these so this is your saber sin okay an x-ray can also be given saber sin so uh, because of the chronic osteomyelitis you have convexity it's primarily tibia you know uh, convexity of the tibia so this is saber sin now let's come back to the question so now if you see we know that herpix simplex and parvovirus this does not have intraventricular uh, on a intracranial calcification toxoplasmosis and cmv both will have calcification so now hepatosplenomegaly toxoplasmosis do not have hepatosplenomegaly there will be jaundice there may be jaundice but you know hepatosplenomegaly with jaundice with you know uh, calcifications periventricular calcifications the most you know uh, appropriate answer will be congenital cytomegalovirus in this particular case